on the February 2024 What's Need. We look at the Prairie Scale Model Railroaders 8,000 square foot layout in HO scale. What a magnificent, incredibly large layout this is. The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at broadway-limited.com. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for February 2024. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we do have a fantastic show in that we have Jennifer Kirk, who shares with us the Trago Mills Model Railway Club in the UK. An absolutely beautiful layout, just fantastic eye candy for us this month. Also this month, we look at the Prairie Scale Model Railroaders 8,000 square foot layout in HO scale. What a magnificent, incredibly large layout this is. And did I mention it's double deck? So check that out in this What's Need video. It is absolutely fantastic to witness this layout. Also, we've got Matt Stern from Bachman Industries that stops by and shares with us a lot of the new Amtrak products that they have coming out in the month of February. It's absolutely amazing, and I'm adding things to my list because, again, it's really great to see the models that Bachman is currently producing. Also this month, Broadway Limited wanted to share with us their HO scale GP30 locomotives with Paragon 4 sound. I've got two of them on the table that I had the opportunity to share, shoot outside in a wonderful daylight photo shoot. I've got locomotive number Union Pacific 847. I shot it from the side and on top. I also have Southern 2585. This is a high hood GP30. I again shot this one in outdoor sunlight and it looks absolutely amazing. Check out Broadway Limited's website to see the multiple paint schemes that are available in this HO scale locomotive. And did I mention that the lighting effects on the UP Beacon, all the lighting effects are fantastic. I was very impressed as I have run them down here on my home layout. So with that, I want to say be sure to check out the What's Neat This Week video podcast that we shoot down here every Saturday night, keeping you updated on what's new in the hobby with special guests, new products, and the regular podcast crew. And with that, let's continue on with the rest of this February 2024 What's Neat. For this segment of What's Neat, I'm standing with Randy Kobiala of the Prairie Scale Model Railroad Club here in Lombard, Illinois. And we are looking at a 7,000 square foot layout. This is amazing, Randy. How do you start talking about this beautiful layout? Uh, that's a good question. There's, there's, a, there's nowhere to really start. It's, it's a big project that's been going on since 2001. And uh, we're getting really close to finally completing the track on the lower level, which will give us all our main lines and give us close to, well, well over a quarter mile of mainline track. An actual quarter mile of mainline An line. actual quarter mile, because I'm looking at a double deck layout with multiple peninsulas. What area of the country would you say that you guys are representing on this? We modeled in Midwest. Um, the Helix area is the, the hub of the layout. 
From there, uh, the upper level goes um, north, and, uh, north into Wisconsin. The other side goes west to roughly the Mississippi River. The lower level goes, uh, one side goes east and one side goes south. So from that area, we're branching out. The club room across the hall, uh, that is connected and that go, that is the city of Chicago, basically, the, the hub of the, uh, the suburban line, which runs along the outside of the wall, which we'll see. That's amazing. And how many years did you say this club's been in existence? Since 2001. That's a lot of work in 22 years. Yes. It's absolutely amazing. So tell us about the uh, design. What type of track do you use? What code rail? All the main line is uh, Pico, pretty much all Pico turnouts, a few custom turnouts, uh, code 83 rail. Um, our command system is all NCE. Nice. Uh, we, are, we do run JMRI for uh, interface with NCE, and that is uh, for running off phones and other devices. Now, is this an operational layout where you guys can operate on it? Yes. Uh, you will see some car card pockets uh, on the upper level. Uh, the lower level, last time we really operated, it's been a little while now, the lower level is not very functional at that point. So it's still not quite connected. We have a few more feet of track to go and we'll have it done. <laughs> how long would you say your typical operating segment goes and how many members do you have? Uh, in the past, we would, we would get roughly 20, 25 members to uh, run an operating session and they'd last about three hours. Uh, the club itself, we've hit 80 members now, so we are growing quickly. The hobby seems to be taking off nicely, which That's is nice. great. Well, are there favorite parts of the year layout of this layout that you like? I have a few favorite aisles, yeah. It's kind of, you know, segments here and there, but uh, and everybody has their own, what, what they like to do. There's some really good switching areas, and uh, it's a fun layout for just running. The upper level is a lot of single track with passing sightings, so it's fun to look, fun to run. Uh, you really have to watch what you're doing, like run on a train. The lower level is going to be almost all double main, so it'll be a little bit more uh, express. Now, this layout looks like it's relatively complete. Would you give a percentage on completeness? Probably about oh, 60-70%, somewhere in there. So we've, we've got a ways to go yet. We're still in, in the building phase, but it's getting close. Now, I assume you guys also meet probably once a week here with the members? Oh, uh, Friday nights are running night. We'll get, it's just, you know, members show up. Saturday is a group that runs. Uh, our members get keys, so it's, we're open 24-7, basically, uh, to the members. And uh, there's people down here pretty much all days, times, you name it. Depends on their work schedule and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, we we get a lot of a lot of running of trains down. Here. That's really fantastic. Everybody in the club gets keys. It's almost like this is their own home layout. Would you say? Yes, that's what makes it very attractive to a lot of people, especially if they have uh, odd work schedules that can't make it, you know, on certain nights because of work. So they can come down, you know, three in the morning if they want to turn the lights on and run trains. How about that? Okay, so I think you said it took 25 people to operate this layout? Um, we're actually talk, talking now to really operate when the lower level is fully operational uh, with what's going to be going in on the lower level. It would probably take almost 50 people to run the layout. And you've got that many members too. We do. Getting everybody here at once, that might be a challenge, but we'd also have guests. We had a, we had a lot of guests that come down on a regular basis. So do you, would you guess you've got about 100 members in this club? Uh, with associates, we're, we've got close to it. Uh, That's uh, amazing. 80 regular members, and I don't, I'm not sure the account of uh, associates, but yes. Has this layout been written up in the model press? No, it has not. Oh my gosh, this is one of the best kept secrets in Lombard, would you say? Yes. This is amazing. This is amazing. All the guys, all of our buddies came with us today, and they're walking around checking it all out. Um, I got to tell you what, the valances are amazing, and it seems like you've studied the lighting on how you light this layout. Yes. Uh, actually, we're, we're actually going to be revamping a little bit of the upper level. The technology's changed with the LEDs a little bit. We're running all 12-volt LEDs for our layout lighting, um, and it's you know very efficient, nice to run, and uh, 
but now that the brighter LEDs are out, we're switching some of the, the upper areas to the, a little bit brighter. Um, just getting started on that. But yeah, when the lights are out, this, this layout looks gorgeous with the balances and whatnot. Uh, it was nicely designed by one of our members. Let and, me ask ask you this question. Um, is there a favorite aspect of this layout that you like? Is it buildings? Is it laying track? Is it doing roads? Is it electronics? What are some of the things you love to do? I'm more of the carpenter. I do a lot of the woodworking, um, but I, I've, I've done scenery. I have my sections. We Everybody gets, can sign up for sections if they want and do scenery. Um, so I, I do some scenery, woodworking. I've laid track. I've done some wiring, but my, my thing seems to be more of the, uh, the woodworking. This is absolutely amazing. We're going to shoot some video that they're going to watch as they hear you talk about this beautiful empire that you all have built. Okay. It's quite uh, an accomplishment, I must tell you. Oh, thank you very much. We're proud of it. Well, we put a lot into it. And it, uh, the, the one thing we really pride ourselves on, it runs really, really well. <laughs> uh, it's no fun to run trains if they don't run well. You got that right. Randy, thank you so much for sharing this amazing layout with us. Thank you for With the viewers out. of What's Neat. Okay. <laughs> the OO gauge. Trago Mills Model Railway was completed in 1989 after approximately one year of construction. It was built by a team of 18 people and measures 88 by 14 feet and at the time of its completion was the largest model railway in the entirety of the United Kingdom. Here in the UK we traditionally have quite small houses compared to those that a lot of people enjoy in the US. That means that it's rare for a home modeler to have a layout of the kind of size that we see here at Trago Mills and that's why these are such popular venues to go and visit. Entering through the door you're first greeted with a site of Trago Mills Central Station and this is one of four principal stations that can be seen around the layout. It really is quite impressive featuring goods yards and also a further avoiding line on a viaduct behind. There is a tremendous depth of detail to this layout and it's quite clear that it's been built by a very passionate group of people. It rewards careful scrutiny and the closer you look the more details you can find which include these little cameos which often allude to references to popular culture or little jokes. Here on the screen you can see the Beatles crossing their very own Abbey Road crossing. The locations featured on the layout often allude to real geographical places around the United Kingdom. Some of them are more subtle than others, but particular favourites of mine include the Liverpool Albert Docks, Stonehenge, the iconic South Coast Rail Route that follows the Dawlish Sea Wall, a funicular railway and Canterbury Cathedral.
The model also showcases the differences between the dramatic rolling countryside of parts of the UK, stately homes, the built-up towns and villages, and also some of the more industrial areas, such as the ports, the railway shunting yards, and other areas. And what model inspired by parts of the UK would be complete without its very own London Underground Station? This layout also features a large motive power depot, where locomotives can be seen ready and awaiting their next turn of duty. Around the perimeter of the layout there are a number of different push buttons, and these allow visitors to be able to activate a number of different animated sound or light features. These include things as varied as Morris dancers dancing in the car park of the public house. There's also a flyover of the Red Arrows RAF Aeronautical Display Team. You can even hear the sound of the bells of Canterbury Cathedral. and a number of others too. And these add another dimension to the enjoyment of this huge layout. When we visited the layout, there were a number of different trains running at that time. Some of these were on a circuit of the full layout. Others worked on a shuttling system out and back at different points of the layout. And it meant that you could always see trains moving. And sometimes it was hard to predict just where they were going to go and which stations they were going to stop at. And that's something that would keep children entertained for hours. When you consider that this model layout was built originally in 1989, when a lot of the modern scenery products that we take for granted today were just not available, it really is an astounding feat of modelling. It stood the test of time well, and certainly there are extra detail items that are clearly being added all the time, so it's never exactly the same twice between two visits. Newton Abbott is in the southwest of the United Kingdom. In the area are a number of preserved rail lines, and these provide a great mix of attractions for those interested in combining rail fanning with a tour of some of the most scenic areas of Britain's countryside. The Trago Mills Model Railway is just one of the attractions that is well worth taking in if you're ever in this area.
For this segment of What's Neat, I've got Matt Stern, the marketing manager of Bachman Industry in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, with some really exciting new products for this February's What's Neat video. Hey, Matt, how are you today? I'm doing great, Ken. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I know you've got some really exciting stuff to talk about, and it's stuff that I love. So go ahead and shoot. All right. Um, well, so... Uh... We'll start off with some uh, some stuff that uh, I think we may have shown on social media before, um, but these are our first full complete samples of these. Okay. Um, first off here, this is our Amtrak GP38-2 and HO scale. Um, this is going to be joining our GP38 line, um, which is uh, they're coming DCC ready. And uh, it's a really cool scheme. It's what you see on the maintenance of way trains, typically on the Northeast Corridor and the Michigan Corridor. Um, I think they have some in Southern California as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, it'll go great with, uh, you know, as, as you and everybody know, um, we've had a, a lot of great Amtrak stuff coming out recently. And uh, this is a kind of an essential addition to the line if you're going to be running an Amtrak line that, um, you know, where they maintain their own track. You are absolutely correct. And I've been going through the books looking at various types of switchers that, you know, I could either decal or make. But it sounds like you've just filled that void for us. That's, that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> so, uh Moving to N scale, um, so Larry last time I believe went over the um, the new uh, SD40 2s that we have coming out. These are uh, totally uh, newly tooled models, um, and he had all but one of the road names available um, to show you. So the one that he didn't have was the Santa Fe. Um, this has now come in, so this is the uh, the Santa Fe version here. Wow, how about that? Very and, cool. Uh, like you mentioned last time, this is uh, this is going to be uh, DCC sound. Um, comes with a Soundtracks economy board on board, um, so it's going to have the uh, you know the it's got the full full sound package with it. Beautiful model. The N scalers are going to love it. Absolutely, can never have too many SD forties. <laughs> so obviously, I'm sure people have noticed in the background. There's something here that we haven't really shown before. Um, and I know, Ken, you're, you're excited about this <laughs> for good reason. I see him in St. Louis. I picked up uh, Scotty Hicks uh, two weeks ago that was on the show. And sure enough, he rode on one of these cars you're about to show. Yeah. Yeah, so I actually have one out of the box here. This is our HO scale <sighs> Siemens Venture car in the Amtrak Midwest scheme. Beautiful. <laughs> wow, and, full uh, interior. Look at that. Yep. So these have full interiors. Um, they are, uh, I believe they are uh, specific to the car type. Um, so the interior on this will be different to the interiors on the, uh, the via rail ones, which are actually out and shipping now. Yes. Um, they come with sound, uh, not sound, sorry, not much sound in a passenger car. They come with uh, lighting, um, interior lighting. Uh, as you can see here, you've got really, really nice uh, flush windows on it. Um, if, if you go to the end of the car here, this is also something that's different to the uh, the via rail version. Um, they actually have marker lights, so this is true to the prototype. The, wow, uh, yes. the Amtrak ones have marker lights, whereas the via rail ones don't. Okay. Um, and what you can do is, on the uh, top of the car here, I'm just going to remove this little thing here. It's a little panel up here, which is a, which is a prototypical detail on the roof. But okay. underneath that, what we have is got a couple of switches here. And what they'll do is when you're on the layout, you can control the marker lights individually. You can decide which ones you want on, which ones you want off. So you can run it prototypically with just the ones at the end of the train lighted at the end. Wow, that's cool. Wow. So it's a very cool car. Um, right now we have four road numbers for the coach version. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, as we were saying, as you were saying, there's, you know, there's more versions um, you know, on the on the real on the real train, when we were tooling these up, these were the only ones that were actually out on the roads. So, these are what we have right now. Um, couldn't possibly speak to what we might have in the future. Right, but right. This we, is what we have. Just look at the prototype, and that's what they're coming out with. This is fantastic. It's awesome that you guys have got that relationship to come out with models that quickly. If you look back into the early '80s when the SD40. Dash twos came out. The manufacturers were about nine years behind on coming <clears throat> out with the models. And here we are today, 2024, and you guys are coming out with this stuff literally a year to six months after the prototypes are on the rails. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of that is thanks to, uh, 
the, the involvement of Siemens in, 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 in the production of these models. You know, they, they've been a tremendous help. Um, you know, they, they provided us with all of the prototype information and blueprints, everything we needed to, uh, to really replicate them as realistically as we could. Beautiful. Great work, Bachman. Great work, Matt Stern. What else you got to share today? <laughs> so, staying on the theme of Amtrak and staying on the theme of things that are uh, just about as, uh, as new as you can get. Drum roll, please. We have the first painted samples the Acela 2. Look at that streamlined locomotive. And this is uh, probably, in my opinion, one of the coolest looking trains uh, on the rails in America right now. Um, and we're really excited to be able to bring an HOCL version of this to the market. Fantastic. So this is the, uh, this is the, uh, the power car. There's two of these. One of them will be powered with the actual motor for the model. One of them will be unpowered, but will still be have functional lighting on it. Okay. Um, they both have pantographs that can raise and lower. And on the powered one, I'm not going to open it because you need a screwdriver to get to it. But um, under this panel down here, you can open this panel up and you can switch this selector switch and change it to pantograph operation if you want to run prototypically with actual live catenary. Fantastic. So yeah, like I said, this is this is the uh, one of the two cab car or uh, power cars. Uh, we have the train set version set up here. Um, so what it, the way it's going to be configured is we're going to have a train set um, with three cars from the prototypal consist, um, and then six additional cars that you'll be able to buy separately to make the, the full nine car consist that the real train runs with. Yes. And the reason for doing this is you know we could offer a nine car train altogether, but you know one that would be a you know a fairly pricey train to to sell as one piece, and and two. A lot of people probably don't have space on their layouts for a nine-car passenger train, train plus two power cars. Right. And, you know, that's totally fine. I know I don't have space for that on my layout. But for those who do, um, we will have the entire set available um, as separate sale cars. Um, so we've got the end car here. Oh, nice. Um, there's one of these at each end of the train. This is the first class car, which is denoted by the red door here. Um, this one links up to the power car on this end, which is why it has a full set of trucks here. And then if you see here, this is something, again, we don't see much in U.S. railroading. It's got a shared truck that links onto the next car. Okay. And every single car in the train, until you get to the other end, where it ends like this, has this shared truck system. Okay. So it's, an art, it's a fully articulated train set. And I'll show you how it works here a little bit. It's, okay. It, I'm not going to really be able to connect them because I'm holding them in midair here. But just for demonstration purposes, this is the cafe car, which... Uh, Looks a little odd because there's no trucks on this one. Right. It's uh, the middle car of the train set version, uh, which will also be the middle car on the full consist. Um, it doesn't come with any trucks because it's where the two halves of the train meet. So it has one set of shared trucks from the other, from the next car on one end and then one facing the other way, locking in on the other end. Wow, the engineering that must have went into that. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it, it's a very cool system, and uh, we've tested this extensively uh, on gradients. Um, we just took it to a layout, um, which I'll uh, actually be giving you some video of to, to, to put into this. Okay. Uh, you'll, you'll see it's uh, – this is, this is a guy called Andy Rubo, really, really talented Northeast Corridor modeler. Um, he actually built all of his own catenary. Um, but oh we uh, went and we tested it on his layout. Um, it ran perfectly. He has a uh, – um, he has a, a pretty pretty steep gradient where you have one line that, that comes off and does a kind of a fly under the main line. It ran over that beautifully, and uh, you know, the whole set um, just ran exactly as it was supposed to, which is which is great because it's it's certainly a, you know not your standard uh, coupling system. Fantastic. So I'll just do a little demonstration here of how it works. So you've got these prongs here; they have to fit into. The, the socket in okay. here, which you might not be able to see all too all too well, but all you have to do is you get these hooks here, you lock them into the into the, the tracks underneath here, slide it in, and it connects. And like I said, we're holding it in midair, so it's not really going to connect. But sweet, that's that's essentially how the system works. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, the list of Bachman stuff I want this year. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm a. You know, I like to just run trains. I'm not into operation. I just love watching trains go around the basement while I'm working on projects. And sure. to me, I wouldn't do the Cantonary, but it would be just beautiful to see that streamline Acela running around the layout. It brings me pleasure, and that's what model railroading is all about. Absolutely, yeah. No, it, it, it's a fantastic train to run. And, uh, you know, what you said is, is, an, is a perfect example of why... 
we think this will be a great seller, not just in the Northeast, but around the country, because it's just such a cool, different looking trade. And I, I, I think people are going to just want it for their layout. Right. That's awesome. It's the way you, you create stuff and create that want. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, this is the other end of the train for the train set version here. Okay. Uh, this is one of the standard business class cars. This is actually the quiet car. Um, it's got a little separate denotation under there. Okay. Um, this is the uh, this this will butt up against the other uh, the other power car there, and uh, on this end it'll connect to the rest of the consist. Um, you'll see we have uh, even though you don't see this stuff in reality, but we went to great lengths to work with Amtrak and make sure that we could get all the details as close to the prototype as possible. So you've got the details in here like the uh, they're actually kind of European style buffers that they have here, all existing on the prototype but okay. you'll never actually see them the way they're coupled in reality oh, wow. but they're here on the model and then if you look here through this end you've got the uh, you've got the passenger doors the gangway doors going between the cars that is very cool I would love to get to the east coast and actually see one of those run in person I'm sure it would knock my socks off absolutely yeah yeah I've seen them in, in testing a couple of times and they are very cool Oh, Matt, that's amazing. Wow, the eye candy today is awesome. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we're, we're pretty excited with uh, what we have coming. Um, and I think that's really about it. Um, we, uh, we're, we're getting a lot of samples in for stuff that I can't talk about right now because it'll be announced at the uh, Amherst show, which is going to be next week when, from recording. Right. And uh, so next month, um, I believe you'll be on with uh, Tyler, and he'll have a ton of stuff to tell you about that. Absolutely fantastic. I love you guys at Bachman for keeping us updated on some of the most uh, amazing projects that we are interested in seeing. That's good. Absolutely. We, we aim to please. All right, Matt Stern, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing with the What's Neat viewers all of the new products for this month. And with that, that is this segment for What's Neat. <laughs> All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting-edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at Broadway-Limited.com. Bachman Trains, now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at BachmanTrains.com. 